welcome to lecture 13 of mathematical mapping and simulation so in today's lecture we are going to look at macroscopic traffic flow model which is one of the specific class of traffic flow models if you remember in the last lecture i told you various other categories or classifications of traffic flow model specifically and this is one of them so what we did in last lecture i defined what is traffic flow why do we do traffic flow modeling by laying down some objectives and then we had a brief introduction to the macroscopic traffic flow model and we also derived the relationship between fundamental variables so we had three fundamental variables q rho and v and then the relationship derived using dimensional analysis was this that the flow rate is equal to density into speed where if you remember the flow rate q is the number of vehicles passing a particular point per unit time while density rho was the number of vehicles in between two particular points on road or highway at a given time so that was the definition of q and rho and this was a relationship so in this lecture firstly i'm going to derive the conservation law because while explaining you the process of mathematical modeling we know that whenever we want to model something so the very first thing we think about is identify a quantity in the system which is going to be conserved and once you identify the conserved quantity you can write a conservation law for the system and then i'll be specifically talking about lwr model what it is we look at various speed density relationships and fundamental diagram of traffic and then we'll look at some example let's first begin with conservation law so here the quantity which i'm going to consider for conservation is the conservation of vehicle itself the conservation of cars it's simple to understand and uh, analogous to any conservation law or any conservation of mass concept which tells you that mass can neither be created nor be destroyed it can just change its you can say position from one place to another uh, it can change the way it is represented but it cannot be just created or destroyed have you ever seen a car disappearing on the road by itself either it is moving and it changes the lane or it changes the road it exit the highway so something happens to the car if it is out of your sight but it cannot just disappear like that so there is the conservation of cars going to be followed physically so that's very sensible to use that car conservation over here which is essentially a mass conservation so if you recall the derivation of conservation law for one dimensional fluid flow in a pipe which was something like this you have a pipe and two position x1 x2 there is inflow here there's outflow at x2 then we know that the volume of fluid or liquid inside this section is nothing but decided by inflow and outflow that means whatever is going in should be going out it does not stay there and at a particular time whatever stay there is the mass or the volume it's a difference between the inflow and the outflow so that's the conservation of fluid and since we know that the macroscopic traffic flow theory assumes that the flow of vehicles or traffic is nothing but a, just like a fluid because if you are observing the cars moving on the road from the top of a cliff or a hill then it may appear to you that a fluid is flowing so because of that analogy of the fluid flow with the traffic flow so the same equation can work here for the macroscopic traffic flow model and what was the equation del rho by del t plus del q by del x equals to zero where rho is density and q is flow rate so both rho and q are functions of space and time x and t so here also we are assuming it's a one dimensional space i have not taken the 
second or third dimension so this is the first model we are studying so that's why we are studying the simplistic version of it which is a one dimensional version so there is only one space variable x and another variable is obviously the time so rho if you remember is the number of vehicles or the cars per unit length and q is the number of cars per unit time passing at a particular point so although there is a difference in between the densities and the flow rate the sense of density in traffic flow is different as compared to the sense of density in a fluid because there we do not look at individual molecules there we just say okay it's the mass of the fluid or it's the volume of the fluid which gives us density but here in traffic we are looking at individual molecules so that's why it's a number of cars it's a discrete quantity although on average we will be talking about the average density and the average flow rate <coughs> so now we derive the model we have already derived the model this is called continuum model also because it's coming from continuum hypothesis or macroscopic model also del rho by del t plus del q by del x equals to 0 and we will know that fundamental relationship q is rho v so if you substitute this value of q over here you'll get del rho by del t plus del by del x of rho v equals to 0 with some initial conditions rho at 0 is rho not so this is called initial density where rho not can be either a constant or it can be function of space so this is your initial density in general density is a function of both the variable space and time but since this is initial density that means this is the, your starting density from where you start observing the system so this is something which is happening at t equals to 0 so that means time is already fixed initial time so it's going to be a function of space variable so this rho not is a function of space variable so again if you rewrite it so this is first order model why this is first order model because the derivatives occurring are of first order both the derivatives are of first order and it is also a pde partial differential equation i hope you already know the difference between ordinary differential equation and partial differential equation ordinary differential equation contains only one independent variable so therefore the total derivatives come there but in pde we have more than one independent variable like here you can see there are space and time are two independent variables so therefore partial derivatives occur over there so this is famously known as lwr model lytton widdham and richard these are the name of the scientist so famously called lwr model so this was independently designed or derived by lytton widdham and richard for different purpose actually they derived it for studying the river flow and so the whole lot of hydrodynamic theory was used here but later on it was much applicable to the traffic the vehicular traffic as well and this is a first model anyone who is researching in the area of traffic flow must be familiar with the lwr model because this is a simplistic version of the same just like in population growth model we start with the linear model first and then we keep on adding the complexity and make the model general same is here is the very first model is the in its most simplest form lwr model so now we need to think about its solution because once we formulate the model the next thing we worry about okay how to solve it so a moment del rho by del t plus del by del x rho v equals to 0 so we know that this can be solved if v is a function of 
rho because we have one equation and two unknowns rho and v so we need to have this assumption that v is function of rho that means speed depends on density and it sounds reasonable that's a reasonable assumption you can say because in practical life also you are going to decide your vehicle speed depending upon the density on the road the traffic density if you are driving on a highly crowded road you will be obviously driving slow otherwise you may increase your speed so practically speed depends on density so because of that this assumption makes sense to us so we can incorporate this into the system and then you get the complete system because the model simply this as a pde cannot be solved completely because there are two variables so we need to have another relationship so that another relationship is going to be coming from this speed density relationship furthermore method of characteristics is used to solve this above model and the method of characteristics is basically an analytic technique however alternatively numerical technique can also be used to solve lwr models see right now we are talking about the various possibilities or we are approaching towards solution so one technique is analytic technique which is method of characteristics another technique is going to be a numerical technique so this method of characteristics is not a very general technique you can say even if you learn this technique for this particular first order model of traffic flow then and if you try to apply that technique on some higher order model for traffic flow because this is a first model if you go towards research in this area you'll have the second order and third order models as well so there you cannot apply the method of characteristics because it will fail because it's an analytical technique it has its own limitations but the numerical technique if you learn can be applied even on the higher order models so that's why in this course i'll be restricting myself to teach you the numerical technique part not the analytic one you can take it yourself as a task and you can learn this method of characteristics and know that's a very interesting theory actually but if we start learning the method of characteristics here it will take up another three or four lectures so we are not going to do that rather we'll be learning the numerical technique because that numerical technique which we are going to learn is going to be a general technique and can be applied to other models also other pds also which are not necessarily the traffic flow model that's going to be a very general technique so that's about the solution but that we are going to discuss in the next lecture right now we are going to continue with by looking at this speed density relationship v is equal to v rho so intuitively this should satisfy following three conditions the first condition being dv by d rho should be negative that is v should be a decreasing function of density which is obviously true because if density is high then the vehicle's average speed should be low this is something i've just explained to you if you are driving on a highly crowded road you will be ob obviously driving slow otherwise you can drive fast and the second condition is v is v max when rho is 0 and v is zero when rho is rho max or it's also called jam density rho jam so these are the three conditions which any speed density relationship must satisfy it may give you some additional information but these are the mandatory conditions which it should satisfy if you want to understand second and third condition so that's very easy to understand because there's no vehicle on the road rho equals to 0 means there is no vehicle on the road so anybody who wants to drive in that kind of condition can drive at the maximum speed so that's a free flow speed basically and when the density is high you are stuck in a traffic jam so you are not obviously moving so in that case velocity is going to be zero so if you want to understand this graphically so that's easy say this is v rho 
this is Vmax and rho max. this is rho equals to 0. So actually we want to fit in a decreasing function according to the point number 1. So it can be like this. So there can be other kind of decreasing curves also. But uh, so we are going to look at that. So that's just to give you a general idea how a speed density relationship graphically is going to look like. So this is one. The, this is the first speed density relationship which we are going to study. It was given by Green Shield. He assumed a linear relationship between v and rho. V is v max 1 minus rho by rho max. So that was the assumption or that was a you can say derived model by Green Shield and now we'll check three conditions which I just stated. The first is dv by d rho should be negative. So if you differentiate this with respect to rho we'll get v dashes minus v max by rho max which is obviously negative and second condition is when rho is rho max you can see v is 0 and when rho is 0 v is v max so it's very easy to verify that this given function satisfy all the three conditions of the speed density relationship and if you uh, this v max is having another name this is also called free flow speed vf in some books or some text you may find uh, this notation so you should not get confused actually the appropriate most appropriate the more appropriate notation is vf because it's never the maximum speed it's the free flow speed which you are going to try with so this is a linear relationship you can see it's a decreasing graph so v is given by this so this graph is representing this equation V max is 30 miles per hour. You can see the maximum speed from the graph and rho max is 0.2 per mile. And that's a straight line graph. So that's a linear graph. Next, we are going to talk about fundamental diagram. This is in continuation with the speed density relationship 1. Because there are three variables, if you remember, rho, q and v. We have already seen the relationship between speed and density so what about the flow rate so here the fundamental diagram is going to tell you about the flow rate so fundamental relationship which we just derived was q equals to rho v if you put this value of v into this fundamental relation we'll get q equals to v max rho minus rho square by rho max and this is nothing but a vertically downward parabola in rho q plane so whenever you want to analyze a curve or a graph we want to imagine its shape in our mind like for the speed density relationship you know the graph was monotonically decreasing while this one is not like that, this is going to be in the shape of a vertically downward parabola. So let's further analyze it. So for that, we need to look at something. When rho is rho max, then q is 0. And when rho is 0, q is 0. dq by d rho is given by this. Very easily you can differentiate. And if you put dq by d rho equals to 0, rho is rho max by 2. So this is your critical point. And if you look at the second order derivative, we'll get negative minus 2v max by rho max, which is negative. So it means rho equals to rho max by 2 is maxima. So that's simple calculus. You want to know where is the maximum of the flow rate happening. So we put it derivative equal to 0, get the critical point and by second derivative coming out to be negative, we confirmed that at rho equals to rho max by 2, we are going to get a maximum in the flow rate. So the same thing we are going to visualize with the help of this curve. So that's a vertical downward parabola between q and rho. You can see this side we have density 
and this side we have the flow rate so you can see from here that q is 0 at rho equals to 0 this point and at rho equals to 0.2 which is rho max so at these positions q is 0 and q is q max at rho equals to rho max by 2 so you just need to remember this 0.1 so this is q max and if you look at again the formula for q so if you put rho equals to rho max by 2 you get q max so rho max by 2 minus rho max square by 4 into rho max it gives you v max into rho max by 4 which is particularly in this example 1.5 per hour so that's the unit of flow rate so you can see that this is the general expression you need to remember that the maximum flow rate is happening at this so this rho is called the rho max by 2 is called the optimal density why this is called optimal density because at this particular density you are going to get the maximum flow rate if you remember one of the objectives of traffic flow modeling was to optimize the flow that means we want to know what are the most appropriate conditions because you see if you are driving on an empty road there are no vehicles so that's why flow uh, you are just kind of wasting the space you can drive more people can drive but they are not so then also flow rate is less and if you are driving in a crowded area so that means this side the density is high so this is a high density region this is a low density region then also you cannot drive at a good flow rate because in that case your speed is going to be reduced so this that's why this is the optimal position at rho max by 2 you are getting the maximum efficiency maximum flow rate and if you look at speed flow diagram so that's going to be this that's not a function i should say but that's just a diagram so it's easy to draw so this is q max and you can say this is happening at v equals to 15 which is v max by 2 because we are continuing with the same example optimal speed why it's optimal speed again because it gives you maximum flow rate so q max is rho max into v max by 4 can be learned like rho max by 2 into v max by 2 so this expression we need to remember that the optimal flow happens when both the density and the speed are the half of their maximum values rho is rho max by 2 and v is v max by 2 is going to give you the maximum flow rate and apart from the linear speed density relationships we do have different speed density relationships also okay the first one in the list is green shield which i just told you The second one is given by Greenberg. V is V max log rho max by rho. Third is given by Underwood. V is V max e raised to power minus rho by rho max. And fourth is given by Pipes and Munjal. V is V max 1 minus rho by rho max raised to the power n, where n is obviously greater than 1 integer because if n is exactly equal to 1 it's going to be the green shields model you can see but in this model n is having some different value than 1 so that's not an exhaustive list because uh, so many researchers and uh, engineers are working on this since so many decades so there has been plenty of speed density relationships in the literature so these are just the few important ones and all of these should verify the three conditions so if you are given a task or a question okay verify whether this model or is suitable for a speed density relationship then you should verify those three conditions if they are satisfied then we can say yes and let's look at this numerical example a highway section has an average spacing of 25 feet under jam conditions and a free flow speed of 55 miles per hour so these are the two things are given to us the average spacing and the free flow speed 
assuming that relationship between speed and density is linear linear relationship means uh, the same relationship the green shields model we are going to use so we have to determine the jam density rho max or rho jam the maximum flow this is q max the density at maximum flow and the speed at maximum flow so average spacing of 25 feet means so this average spacing between the vehicles is 25 feet but remember this is under jam conditions so that means if i compute density from the spacing so there's a formula which connects density with the spacing so rho is actually 1 over the average spacing i'll explain you how this formula is coming in the next lecture so it's 1 by 25 per feet and you want to convert this into miles so you have to multiply with a factor of 5280 so it's 211.2 vehicles or cars per mile i have convert to mile because the velocity is given me in miles per hour so this is jam density rho jam is 211.2 vehicles per mile so that's obviously a jam q max because they want to know maximum flow so q max we know is rho max by 2 into v max by 2 which is rho max into v max by 4 so rho max we have just computed 211.2 v max is given to us 55 by 4 so this is 2904 vehicles per hour so that's the maximum flow rate and rho is rho max by 2 at q equals to q max we know that the density at maximum flow they are asking so we know that it's rho max by 2 so this is nothing but 105.6 vehicles per mile and they are also asking a speed at maximum flow so v is v max by 2 which is 55 by 2 which makes it 27.5 miles per hour so the numerical questions are just like that only we have derived the four things which they were asking us so you just need to know the formulas and the connections between the speed density relationships and the flow so you'll be able to solve this in the next lecture we are going to look at the numerical solution of lwr model which i just told you in the beginning of this lecture that the lwr model which we derived by using conservation of cars is solvable either analytically or numerically so we want to learn the numerical technique for the same so next lecture we'll be talking about that